hello. Today we're going to start adding and subtracting fractions. So one thing to think about is before you can add or subtract, the pieces really need to be the same size uh, so that we can compare. And it's like you're counting how many pieces are there. And you want those pieces to be the same. So let's compare these two. So this technically would be one half because we've cut that pizza in half. This one would technically be one, two, three out of four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. Okay, so if you were to just add one half to that, you're not just adding one piece. It's just hard to add together until you convert the one half. So let's just cut this a little bit more. Oh, that's a little crooked. So let's imagine if this pizza were a whole pizza and we cut it into the same size Now you can see that one half of the pizza actually contains one, two, three, four pieces. They're the same size as the ones over here. So let's change that to one half equals four out of eight. Okay, so that's like what we did before with equivalent fractions. And now it's actually very simple to add once you do that. So if we have three over eight plus four over eight, we've got seven pieces out of eight. So if you were to squash those together, so in my family, we often have leftovers. We'll buy two pizzas usually. And so it might look something like this when we're done. And I'll usually push them all together into one box to put them away. So just imagine if these, if these pieces over here were moved. You can see that there are seven out of eight pieces. Okay, so let's talk about, so of course you're not gonna draw a pizza every time you're adding some fractions, right? So let's go over the technical details of how to add these. So these are the steps. What you're going to do is rewrite as equivalent fractions with the same denominator. I guess that might sound a little confusing. Denominator. Okay. Because when I say equivalent fractions, I don't mean the two fractions that we're adding are equivalent. We're going to change each fraction to an equivalent version where they have the same denominator. Okay, and then you're going to add or subtract the numerator. You don't do anything with the bottom at that point. You might say, well, why? Because the bottom really doesn't tell you how many there are. It really just tells you what size it is. So just remember, the bottom tells you the size, the top tells you how many. The denominator stays the same as we were just saying. And at the very, very end, you do have to simplify if possible. Because, you know, we like things kind of simple in math. We don't want to have this crazy looking fraction when it could actually be just one half. Okay, add or subtract each pair of fractions. Let's do an example. So remember, the first step is we need these two denominators to be the same. Now, I always start off by asking myself, can the smaller one be multiplied to get the larger one? Because if it can, you only have to change one of them. And in this case, we pretty much did luck out because three times five is 15. And whatever you do to the bottom of the fraction, you have to do to the top. That's how you keep it basically the same. You're just basically cutting it into more pieces and everything has to be cut. Okay, so let's rewrite this, eight over 15 minus, so 1 times 5 is 5, and then 3 times 5 is 15. So we got that from right there. All right, now that we have the same size pieces, now we just subtract. Whoops. So we've got 8 minus 5 is 3, and the piece doesn't change the size of it. Now one last step, let's just check. Is there something that will divide both numbers? 3 is a prime number, so just check if 15 can be divided by 3, and it can. So you're going to divide each of those by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So 1 fifth will be your final, final answer. Okay, a lot of steps, so let's practice this a few more times. 1 half and 1 fourth. So always take your smallest number and ask yourself, can it be multiplied to get the larger one? And yay, in this case it can, so let's do that. 
we're going to multiply this times 2. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Now let's rewrite this. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 1 over 4. Just rewrite it. Now, cha-ching! We've got the same denominator, right? Which means we're ready for the next step. 2 plus 1 is 3 over 4. Now ask yourself, 3 and 4, is there any number that will divide both besides 1? And there isn't. So we're finished. One fifth and two thirds. Let's check. Can we multiply three to get five? Uh, we can't with any kind of whole number. So what we want to do is think about the smallest number that can be divided by five and three. Now, if three and five have nothing in common, like you can't, they're, they're both prime numbers. If you're ever in that situation, you actually just multiply, kind of flip flop. Multiply the 3 by 5, top and bottom, and then you also multiply the 5 by 3. And that will always work, it just means if you end up with a number that's, that could have, if you could have used a smaller number, you just might have to do more simplifying at the end. So this is a trick that will always work for getting the same denominator. Kind of just flip flop and do one denominator by the other, the other by the other. Okay. That wasn't very coherent. <laughs> well, if we understand. Okay, so 1 times 3 is 3. 5 times 3 is 15. Now we're working on this one. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 5 is 15. All right. Denominators are the same. Woohoo! And now we're going to add our tops. 3 plus 10 is 13 over 15. Then ask yourself, can I divide anything? The only things that divide 15 are 3 and 5, and 13 is a prime number, which means it can only be divided by 1 or itself. So we are finished. Oh, this one's got a negative. Now, I want you to think, uh, when you see a negative, I want you to kind of think about the negative as being attached to the number on top when you're doing these types of problems. Now notice we already have the same denominator. So most of our work is already done for us. Just think about what is negative 3 plus positive 1, which is a negative 2. And we can now divide both of those by 2. Now just keep in mind, sometimes it's a little bit confusing. You might see the negative attached to either the top or the bottom, or you might see the negative out in front. Those are the same answer. You might even see the negative attached to the bottom like that. That's also the same answer. As long as there's only one negative there, just think of it as negative one half. Okay, last example. Okay, the six and four. This is one of those ones where you can't multiply four to get six. However, since you can divide both of those by two, it means there's going to be something smaller than just multiplying six by four and four by six. You can also think of it as factors. But since we haven't been going by that route, I think we'll just do a little guess and check. So if you take this number, multiply it by 2, and you get 12, and then just ask yourself, does 4 go into 12? It does. 4 times 3 is 12. If, if 12 didn't work, you could do 6 times 3, and then check with the 4 again. So we're going to multiply 6 times 2, 5 times 2, and then we're going to multiply 4 by 3, and 1 by 3. Let's rewrite this. So we've got 5 times 2 is 10, 6 times 2 is 12, minus 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12. Woohoo! We've got the same denominator. Now, notice it is subtraction, so 10 minus 3 is 7 over 12. 7 is a prime number, and it doesn't go into 12, so we don't have to do any more simplifying. Alright, that's it for today. Good luck, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.